With today's mass air travel and affordable package holidays, perhaps we take our foreign holiday destinations a little for granted these days. But it was not so long ago that a week at one of Britain's seaside resorts was the most that many families could afford. As public and private transport became more convenient between the wars, Britain's bays and beaches became even more popular and more crowded. Deck chairs and beach huts added colour and a degree of comfort to beaches everywhere so that all could enjoy the sun, sea and sand for their annual summer holiday. In 1936, a showman by the name of Billy Butlin opened Britain's first purpose-built holiday camp on the east coast, near Skegness. It had been a particularly dismal rain-soaked holiday in Skegness four years earlier, which made him realise that people needed more than sun, sand and sea, especially when the sun declined to appear. His camp offered outdoor and indoor entertainment geared to the demands of the growing masses who had the time and the inclination for a proper week's holiday. For three pounds a head he provided a chalet, four daily meals and all entertainment was free, with the now famous Redcoats acting as organisers, cheerleaders, guides and even babysitters. In many ways Billy Butlin brought the concept of the formal summer holiday to the masses and in the process created an entire industry in its own right. For thousands of Britons, their first real memories of a summer holiday were provided by the genius of Billy Butlin. After World War II, the austerity years demanded that Britons made the best of domestic holiday resorts. Coastal towns and cities around the country competed with their many and varied attractions to bring in holiday makers and tourists by the thousand. Our beaches may rarely be as crowded today but in the late 1940s and 50s, we were all too glad to have a few square feet of beach and a long list of things to do when the sea and sand got too much. Piers and promenades for taking the sea air. Messing around in boats if you didn't want to actually be in the water. or somewhere to occupy the kiddies in safety and give parents a brief respite. Holiday makers could always take a stroll around the parks and gardens or perhaps a boat trip around the harbour. In those days, there was never a shortage of things to do in our seaside resorts, whatever the weather. Most resorts sported a fine open-air swimming pool for those for whom the sea was a little too wild. Mum and Dad could relax in a deck chair whilst the kids splashed away merrily. Sadly, many of these pools fell into disrepair as the British holiday maker was tempted abroad, and most were filled in. But for many people, the sea air, sunshine and safe waters of the Lido are golden memories of the perfect childhood summer holiday.